My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. My soul, give praise to the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my life. Sing praise to my God while I live. I use these words to start my time of prayer. Yes, Lord, I want to praise you. Today, I'd like to praise you for the gift of my life. A life that I didn't choose. I didn't pick it off a shelf, but I received it as a gift from you. And how I long to live the life that I have received from you, being like you. I'd like to be like clay in the potter's hands. There's a point in the forge, a book written by St. Joseph Maria, point number 875. It says, Lord, help me to be faithful and docile towards you, like clay in the potter's hands. In this way, it will not be that I live, but you, my love, who will live and work in me. And so I want to be like clay in the potter's hands. I want you, my love, my Lord Jesus Christ, to live and work in me. The prophet Jeremiah uses this imagery in today's first reading, talking about that potter who was making a vessel out of clay. And as he was fashioning the vessel, da, <laughs> he realized oh, this vessel is just not coming out right. And so he reworked it. He probably had to break it, melt it, and mold it so it could be used as a new vessel. And scripture tells us he saw that it was good. Through the prophet Jeremiah, through the words of the prophet Jeremiah, I hear you talking to me. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand. And I'd like to use this image to guide me as I raise my heart to you, Jesus, in prayer. I would like to be like the clay in the potter's hands, clay in your hands, malleable, willing to be reworked, molded into being like you, being another Christ. Lord, help me to be faithful and docile towards you like clay in the potter's hands. And in this way, it will not be I that live, but you, my love, who will live and work in me. And it is with this openness of mind and heart, this willingness to be docile to you, Jesus, that I open the Gospel of St. Matthew to Matthew chapter 13, in which I read, Jesus said to the crowds, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net which was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into vessels, but threw away the bad. And they throw away the bad. You, Jesus, go on to explain so it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? So I'm trying to understand this parable that you tell me, Jesus, the whole of fish caught in the net 
has a mixture of good fish. The good fish were put in vessels, but there were bad ones too, and the bad were thrown away. Good fish and bad fish. My guess is that the good fish were still alive, fresh, splashing around in the nets. They had life. The bad fish, I assume, were dead. The nets might have pulled in the fish from the, the seabed and picked up everything. Those that had life and those that were dead. Dead fish, putrid, rotting, lifeless and useless. Maybe this vividly depicts what your soul and my soul can be like. My soul can be alive in the state of grace and dead when I have lost this life, this state of grace through sin, through serious sin. That's why I turn to you, Jesus. I want, I long to be in a state of grace, to be alive. Someone who is in the state of grace gives off the aroma of Christ, to use those words of St. Paul when he speaks in Corinthians, Second Corinthians. When you are in the state of grace, the grace of Christ, you attract others to him because you become another Christ. Jesus, do I allow you to live and work in me? Do I make myself malleable like clay in the potter's hands, clay in your hands? Am I ready to change? Grant me the, that willingness to change. I want you to live in me. I want you to work in me. And may these times of prayer, each day, ten minutes, that I spend with you, help me to be like you. You know, this reminds me of a series, a series called The Chosen. Whenever I mention a series, people's eyes pop up, blink. <laughs> yes, The Chosen is a series. And it's on the Play Store, and it's for free. It's a series about the life of Jesus. A series with a difference, I'd say, because the most striking thing in that series called The Chosen is how you, Jesus, are depicted. You come out as such an amiable person, affable, friendly, likable, warm-hearted and with a great sense of humor, one who appreciates the others for who they are. So I'd like to be like you, Jesus. I ask you for your grace to change where I need to change, to be like clay in your hands. Can I be more friendly, likable, more good-humored? Can I appreciate others for who they are? You know, it's funny that we only begin to appreciate people for who they are many times eh? when they are already in a coffin. That's when we make a eulogy. You know, eulogy comes from the Greek you, which is good, and logos, which means speech. We make a good speech about that person. We recall aloud, this person was so kind, or she was always there for me, or he listened to me patiently. But only at the moment that the person is already dead. Jesus, maybe that's the small change I can make today, with your grace, to appreciate people as you did, as you do. You were close to your mother, to your apostles, open to forgiving people. You forgive me in the sacrament of confession. I don't have to wait, Jesus, until the last moments of someone's life to praise them, to thank them, to love them. Help me to live like you, to work like you. Melt me, mold me, use me. How do I appreciate my parents? You know, if you still stay with your parents, 
Can you be another Christ with your smile? Simple words like thank you, sorry, please. If you are married, how do you show your appreciation for your wife or for your husband? Can you be more affable with the children? Even when you have to correct them, it can be done with a smile, tone of voice that Jesus would have used to correct. Well, thanks, Jesus, for spending these minutes with me. With your grace, I will be like clay in your hands. Thank you for the affections I have felt, the inspirations you have given me. The resolution I make that will be to have you more present during the course of this day at school, at my place of work, at home. A resolution to be affable, friendly, warm-hearted, to appreciate everyone I meet. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. <laughs>